Good morning, my creative friends, and welcome to Painting in Your PJs Live with Minette. I am Dr. Minette Riordan, and I am here Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 8 a.m. Mountain Time, sharing my creative practices and processes, sharing how I use art as a tool for personal growth and for self-discovery, and I just love to make art. So if you joined me yesterday, I did a four hour mini painting marathon, which was super fun. And then I kind of woke up this morning and started thinking, you know, what am I gonna do today? And which inspired the, the topic, I wanna share with you five of my favorite tips for finding your creative momentum again, when maybe you've been feeling a little bit uninspired, lost, or stuck. So I, after the call yesterday, did my favorite thing, went to, to uh, the bookstore and Michael's, and I got some new acrylic uh, paint markers to try that are metallics. And so of course I had to add some metallics, but this was one of the paintings from yesterday. I loved how this little sunflower came out and I could see myself doing a series of these. It was also a good reminder of the benefits of, of painting small. Loved this piece as well with the, the silhouettes. This was a redactive painting process. And this one was kind of interesting, kind of a, an abstract rose that I ended up altering somewhat after our live call as well. And so I woke up this morning going, I'm wondering what am I going to do today, you know, after all of that creative energy yesterday. So I went to Michael's and I got these little teeny tiny journals. I love when they have their buy one, get one sales on. I think they were, you know, four bucks. And so the second one was two bucks and they'd had a cute tutorial about painting these and one of their promotional and it reminded me how working small is sometimes a great way to get over a creative hump instead of working really big. So working small can be one of the, the tips for getting over a creative hump. So I thought I would decorate the cover of this. I gessoed it yesterday. So if you're here joining me live, welcome, welcome. Glad to have you joining me for today's Painting in Your PJs Live. Please stop by and say hello in the chat so that I know you're here. If you're brand new to Painting in Your PJs with Manette, then please go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notifications button so you get notified when there's new content or when I am going live on the, on the channel. And I'm just grabbing some brushes here. And I'm just going to play with some paint and get something down on the, the cover of this journal. So good morning, Blanca, bienvenida. And I'm still using the same color palette that I was using yesterday because I just kind of, I kind of love it. So it's magenta and turquoise and a little bit of Naples yellow. I've got some quinacridone, uh, Nicolazzo gold, which I also love. And I love that these little journals from Michael's have a uh, elastic I'm like, what's it called? That have elastic on it. <clears throat> they're just the uh, Artist Loft brand, Avon. Just they're, they're the Michaels brand. Good morning, good morning, Nikki. Great to have you back. Just watching this morning. That's totally awesome. Um, so this is just the Artist Loft brand, four by four, teeny tiny journal. So I'm starting this morning by working with just putting some paint on this journal cover and I'm gonna paint it, paint it up. And I think for the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna work in this little tiny journal. It's really small for me. Sorry, that camera is tending to shift focus. So I don't, I don't know how I feel about working really small, but we're gonna see it's uh, basically it's Zentangle tile size. 
So, you know, it might end up being that it's a Zentangle book. I also have some ideas about taking some of the flower photos that I have taken and doing some botanical drawing, which would be fun to work in really small. So like this is, you know, this would be a more normal journal size for me, like this, this great big one. So it's going to be an interesting experiment. All right, so some of the tips that I want to share with you today about what to do when you are in a creative hump is to number one, work small. So oftentimes it's intimidating to um, approach a really large page or to think, oh geez, I don't have enough time to finish anything or wow you know it's such a pain in the butt to get all of my supplies out well working small can help get around that and i love creating like little sort of project boxes where i have you know like a few collage supplies a few pens a glue stick maybe a pair of scissors in like a little project box that i can pull out and work on whether I'm sitting watching TV or I'm traveling. The number one supply I always take when I'm traveling are my Zentangle supplies. All right, so why is that going in and out of focus? So I'm going to have Brad see if he can work on that focus issue that we're experiencing today. So number one is work small. Number two is play with a supply. So in a minute, I want to play with these acrylic paint markers that I got to see how I like them. I played with them a little bit yesterday as well. And they're very different than the Poscas. They're a little more liquidy, but the colors are pretty. Okay, so this guy... I'm kind of not sure where to go. So play with a supply maybe that you haven't played with in a while. So for me, acrylic paint really wouldn't count because, you know, I use acrylics almost daily in my practice. And I'm making just a big old mess on this because I have no idea where I'm going with it. So I think it's going to get another coat of gesso on it and I will figure it out as I go. So it's always interesting working on a surface like this as well. So this is very slick. So sometimes it takes a couple of coats of gesso. I could see when I scraped the paint how some of the, the paint went right back to the surface underneath. Good morning, good morning, Elena. Great to have you back here today. All right. So number one tip for finding your creative momentum after a dry spell, work small. Number two, pick a supply that you haven't played with for a while and give it a try. Um, so I think in the over the last couple of weeks, I've been experimenting with gouache. So not my normal supply still not my favorite it's my daughter's favorite she loves gouache but i had some fun on a live call with her just kind of spending some time playing with gouache just to kind of see what it's going to do oh i'm sorry about the focus issues we're definitely going to have to to work work on that so somehow when my hand is moving it's shifting focus to my hand and the movement all right so tech stuff to work on that's what happens when we're testing so if you're just joining me this is a four by four little teeny tiny journal that i bought yesterday at michael's they had them on sale buy one get one half off and so i'm going to have fun experimenting working small for a little while which is not my normal for sure. And for now, I just have some really messy paint on the cover. I'm almost wanting to maybe put a little bit of collage on here, which is one of my tips, but I'm going to set this one aside for a little while and come over here to this one and just start working on the inside. 
So when I was at Michael's, I went specifically to get these little journals. And of course, while I was there, I saw that they had some acrylic paint markers on sale. And so I decided to try this uh, set of metallic ones. These are, are you going to focus for me? I don't want to focus that close. There we go. These are just the Michaels Artist Loft brand and they were um, on sale for I think $15 for the set yesterday and I thought okay let me give these a try. So another way to create some momentum is simply to play with a new supply and I'm going to do that by just drawing some patterns here in my journal. And I'm working small, I'm not committed to anything. So this is not about, you know, again, making pretty art. This is about experimenting and play and being in that creative process. If it turns out pretty, okay, great. I'm also always curious when I play with a new supply, not only Okay, that's super frustrating, you guys. Um, sorry about that. I'm going to try maybe moving less. Was it doing that yesterday and I just didn't notice? So I'm in love with this sort of teal, blue, green color so far. The red is kind of interesting. It's a little bit coppery. Let's see how the gold is. Drawing shapes is another way that wasn't on my list of five, but simply just drawing shapes on a page and filling a page with shapes is another really fun way to just kind of find your mojo again. So the best way to get, get back into some creative momentum is to play. Like if there was one tip, it's to play. So first we want to play small. Second, we want to test a supply. Three, we could try working with shapes. Something that I really enjoy doing, okay, I haven't tried this blue yet. So the one thing I noticed yesterday is the Posca's sometimes take a really long time for the paint to come down. This, the paint comes down really, really fast and I had to be careful or I ended up with a, with a puddle. So playing small, filling a page with shapes, choosing one supply to play and experiment with, finding a list of prompts. On Instagram, there is a never ending list of monthly prompts. And um, I love prompts. So sometimes just a little 30 day challenge or a five day challenge can help us get over the hump because someone else is telling us what to create. So a lot of times that's something that um, can I find can inspire me. And I'm getting ready to create some kind of an ebook. I haven't decided quite where I'm going with it yet. That's gonna be 52 art journaling prompts because I know I get stuck and sometimes I need those prompts. So this set had two colors of green, kind of this nice teal. And then this was a grassier green. So these colors are pretty. They're nice and metallic. So the paper, the sketchbook paper in this, right? We've got a little bit of bleed. So, you know, it's not a perfect paper, but it's about what I expected for a little $4 journal. Again, I'm having fun just playing like seeing the page fill up it's not daunting when I'm sitting here looking at this little tiny page so prompts are a great tool for getting over a slump and if prompts aren't your thing then an alternative to prompts would be go find a new artist on Instagram or YouTube and do something in their style, like try a completely different style. So I've been having a lot of fun watching Anita Winter's videos 
lately on Instagram and um, on here on YouTube as well. So I'm very curious about this kind of copper copper color. So the colors are pretty. They have a very, very nice sheen to them. One of the things I get curious about is can I layer colors? How, you know, water permanent are they? Interesting. So this looks like um, simply a different shade of gold. So just a slightly different shade of gold than that first one. Like not a lot of comparison there. So what happens if I come and I draw over the top? Because I love layered effects. So I want to see if they're going to blend, how they're going to bleed, how they're going to dry together. And I'm creating just this little fun quirky page of shapes that just kind of makes me happy, right? Like this is what my morning art activation process often looks like. It's about just playing on the page. Nikki, I loved your soul scribble that you shared on Instagram. That's one of my, my favorite ways to, to get my creativity going also is to do some soul scribbles. So this one's kind of interesting. It's a little bit metallic-y, not quite black, not quite silver. Um, dry is kind of interesting. Hi, Tori. Good morning. Good morning. We are talking about ways to get through a creative hump because I totally woke up this morning going, I have no idea what I want to do this morning after our epic marathon of creativity yesterday and I haven't picked kind of a theme for July yet and you guys know I love uh, to have a good theme to guide me through the month and it'll happen you know I'm not uh, not too worried about it but so it started thinking about well what do I do when I'm not feeling creative and I want to be feeling creative so one tip is to work small and Tori this was I went and got a couple of these yesterday this is a little tiny four by four mini journal it's the Michaels Artist Loft brand and they were on sale buy one get one half off all right so these colors are pretty I'm loving the the colors of these the silver is nice and shiny I'm also noticing they're pretty opaque right like they have a nice opacity to them um, that makes me happy because a lot of times when we're working with metallics we don't always necessarily find the opacity that we're looking for that they can end up being kind of transparent this also helped me discover a little bit about the the paper in this journal as well and noticing that the paint soaked through the paper. So for if I were going to paint in this little mini journal, then I would probably want to put some gesso on the pages first. Okay, I'm going to hit this with the dryer, get it nice and dry, and then we'll move on to the next tip. So, so far those tips have been number one, to work small. Number two, to play with one supply, only one. Number three might be to find a creative prompt or 30 day challenge or explore an artist. Come on back, explore an artist that's new to you and see what you can take from their particular style. So simple, like this page just makes me happy. Like there's absolutely nothing about this page right that's you know um, spectacular or anything except that I had fun drawing it and I had fun testing a new supply so the next tip that I want to share is when you have a book like this whether it's small or whether it's a larger journal to spend some time ahead of time they are nice and shiny aren't they I love that and my lights like show up that shine really well. Another thing to do 
when you're not feeling creative is to get ready to be creative and to prep pages in your journal. So in my case, I wanna do that maybe in a couple of different ways. So the first thing I wanna do is get some gesso down on a few of the pages so that the next time I sit down to work in this little guy, um, then looking for my wedge here, then I am ready to go, right? And I'm not feeling limited or not having to wait for that gesso to dry. So just getting some gesso down and it'll be interesting to see if the gesso will allow this page, um, allow me to paint over this page or alternatively, this might be a collage page. So then I'm gonna just hit this with the dryer and I'm gonna show you a couple of other ways that I like to prep pages. So those feel nice and dry. And so if I just wanted to prep a whole bunch of pages, I would probably just do this a few times over and over and get a number of pages prepped ahead of time. This is one of the best tips I can give you for getting started is prep pages ahead of time. And I want to use up all this gesso on my catalyst wedge here. So, and I can even do this working in two journals at a same at the same time, right? When I'm working in these little tiny journals, how fun is it to, you know, be able to fill up a, a couple of pages at a time? So this is my favorite gesso, the Liquitex Basics. We had someone else share yesterday that they like the golden gesso, but you know, I think this one for the price is, gives great coverage, goes a long way. And Michael so often has great sales on this. So I watch for when it's on sale and stock up. Um, I've tried the Artist Loft Gesso, like I actually ended up buying a gallon of it for covering some, you know, a whole bunch of things um, and a, a giant piece of a canvas one time. And it's okay, right? But it's definitely a lot thinner and not as, um, not as opaque as I would like it to be for a gesso, but it's a, a great sort of starter gesso. All right, let's get that one dry as well. And the in my mustard bottle is just plain white fluid acrylic. So now I have a couple of pages prepped here. I have some color already on one page. So one fun thing to do would be to come in with my Stabilo Marksall, which I love, um, or a pencil or any pen or marking tool. And that actually needs to be sharpened. So let me see. Let me sharpen this up. Oh, my sharpener's right here. Bear with me one second. Is to simply come in and put marks on paper, right? So because oftentimes the thing that gets us stuck in our journal is simply that blank page. So if we just go ahead and these don't have gesso, I'm gonna do it anyway. But we can simply come in and just get some marks on paper that may or may not turn into 
anything else, right? So, and I could do this with the Stabilo, which I love because it is water soluble, but I could also do this with an oil pastel or even one of these fun metallic markers. And it might be even fun to come in and add over the top of this, maybe just a little bit of color, right? Because then I'm not feeling intimidated by the page. So this is similar to how I started all the pieces that I painted yesterday. And I can just go through here. And the whole point here is just to get over the page. Plus it's really fun to scribble. I think that we just don't make enough time to play and scribble and be silly, which is why I love the soul scribble process which I learned first from my friend Whitney Freya. So now I have some color on the page. I can go back and gesso this. I could start adding some paint to this. So one way to prep pages is with marks, right? So this is with marks. Another way to prepare pages was just simply adding gesso. A third way to prepare pages would be to come in and, and I love, look at this, these all have marks on them. They're like ready for the next thing. I'm like, oh, now I'm getting all excited about where I'm going to go with these. And so I can feel my creativity starting to flow. So I could also come in here and do the same process, but with paint. So for example, this is my absolute favorite turquoise, and I'm going to pick two colors. Um, let's do this nickel. Oh, shoot. Yep. Get that off of there. Um, I'm going to do this turquoise and a little bit of nickel as a gold. These do not have gesso on them, so we're going to see what they do. I'm going to grab a brush. And I just want to get some paint on the page. Again, I don't need it to look like anything, right? There's no sort of destination in mind. The messier and the more playful, the better. This is not wasting supplies, right? This is simply getting over the creative hump so we know where to go next. And I have a lot of turquoise paint here, so I'm going to even grab this other journal. I hear that happy sound of the coffee maker upstairs. I can also prep a page by making marks on a page, playing with my brushes. Again, this may all get covered up later and it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't really matter. So this is about not staring at the, the blank page all of the time. All right, so our tips so far have been work small, play with one supply, right? We did the, the markers, um, find some prompts to inspire you. And the fourth tip was to prepare pages. So you can prepare pages with marks. You can prep them with gesso. You can prep them with a tool like a Stabilo Marks All or some oil pastels. You can prep them with paint. And then one of my favorite ways to prep pages is to just get some collage down. So I'm going to go back, even though I've already put some marks because I do have gesso here and because I just want to use up what's on my page. I love prepping pages with just a few collage elements. So I grabbed a whole bunch of stuff. This morning, like way more, like this is overkill, right? For these tiny little pages. But so I'm just gonna, so this is a great example of one that I could just tear some pieces and put on a lot of different pages. I love the colors of that one. Um, that's a focal point collage, right? So I wouldn't use that. Here's some scrapbook paper in a cute pattern, but mm, it's not feeling like my palette this morning. Oh, look, there's some birdies and some gel print. This is especially great for those little itty bitty bits that you can't bear to throw away. There's some 
book pages and some more gel printing pages. So this is kind of fun. This is the inside of a, a chocolate wrapper that I've been saving, but I don't know if this would be an underlayer. It might be an overlayer. Lots of paper in here. All right, and those are probably enough. I'm loving that lady this morning. Okay, those are fun ones. All right. So I don't want to get too overwhelmed with too many choices. Again, this is a great exercise for using up all those gel prints that you love to make. That's a good one too. All right. Oh, there's those. I was wondering where I put those stencils the other day. So stencils would be another great idea for just prepping pages and having a whole bunch of, of pages prepped. And you can do this fast with glue stick or in my case, I want to go ahead and that's clear gesso. Um, I, I really appreciate that Liquitex makes the, the colors of the labels different because these bottles are exactly alike. And, uh, you know, I have occasionally mistaken my clear gesso for my matte medium, and they definitely have different textures. I love clear gesso. It's grittier than white gesso and creates a different texture. I'm going to use matte medium, number one, because I am most likely to paint over these pages or gesso over these pages. So this was one of the pages, test pages that I made in my found objects class, which I had so much fun making that class where I use things I found in nature and things I found around the house to create my own stamps and stencils. I love that these colors don't match at all because I don't want to be attached, right? These early layers, I don't want to be attached to anything. All right, I'm sort of digging this uh, circle here with the leaf in it, and everything's going to turn blue because my that blue paint is still wet. I'm not worried about it. So I think the number one mindset that we need to have to move through those creative stuck places is to let go of needing to create something recognizable, something usable, something shareable, and to 100% stay in. Let me just put some things on paper. So curiosity is one of the best mindsets that you can have when you're in a creative slump and be in the energy of, I wonder what happens if, and I love how the Matte medium is one of my favorite substances for uh, activating the stabilo because it turns it into this gorgeous black lines that you don't get that same effect when you activate it with water. So that's a great example of how fun it would be to what if I did a whole one of these little books or a series of pages where I did nothing but play with my Stabilo Marks All. It does really cool things. So experimenting with supplies is a great way to use up your time. So these pages are already so interesting. No idea what they're going, but I had a lot of fun just putting these things down and wondering what's gonna what's gonna happen here. I'm getting my pages are sticking together. All right, so let's dry this one and then I wanna put some collage on a few more. So for me, collage doesn't always need to show in the upper layers. Sometimes it just is great about creating, adding some meaning and depth to pages. You know, the uh, this I think was, looks like maybe some tracing paper or vellum. So it's partially transparent. I love, I can see what's underneath, but it kind of wrinkles a little bit. It's hard to stop the wrinkles like tissue paper. So you get some nice texture in there. So this one, let's try, if I want this process to go a little faster and I want to prep a lot of pages all at once, 
a glue stick is my best friend. So this, I love these little Egyptian symbols. So that might inspire some kind of really interesting page. I'm okay if things are hanging off the page. I can cut things down later. Remember, this is just simply about getting things down on the page. This one needs, there's a piece. It just intuitively feels like, oh, it just needs some text on here. So let's just add a little bit of text on these pages. There's even a fun, what do you mean, phrase on there. And that's all I have to do. Remember, we're just prepping pages. Like there's no right or wrong way to do this. So this is kind of a fun piece. And this one I would probably want to get matte medium over and get this, you know, painted into my book. But right now I'm going fast. So I'm starting with glue stick because I can always come back and add matte medium over the top. And this is why people love making junk journals full of random types of paper, you know, paper that's been gel printed on, because when you go to work in a journal, these pages are, there's something there to respond to, right? There's something there to respond to. So over the next few days, I think I'm just gonna have some fun continuing to play on these, hi Diego, on these prep pages and see, you know, where else can I go with them once I have some of these things down. This one feels like it could use a little bit more going on here. It's way harder to create with a giant cat in your lap. Yes, my big boy. All right, so I love that little bit of black in there just creates some nice contrast. And again, I'm just using the little scrappy bits that are floating around on my desk. Even the glue stick activates that uh, stabilo in an interesting way. All right, so we got some funky shapes, some funky things happening. And I was really drawn to this colorful page and a spiral that I made. I always get a little obsessed with spirals. Okay, I thought it was going to go on the next page, but apparently it's going to go on this page. So again, we don't have to spend a, a ton of time. So this would be a fun thing to do, like sitting in front of the TV, relaxing. It's not messy to just take a glue stick and one magazine or some scrapbook paper and just go through and add some scrappy bits to pages and then let all of that dry so that when you come back, it is ready to go. Okay, where'd my notes go? So the last thing that I wanted to say about how to get your creative momentum back when you've been in a slump is to pick one supply, we talked about that, but then also to limit your palette because it's overwhelming. Like if I look at my bucket of paints, I have, you know, so many paints that um, I could and colors I could choose from and I love all the colors. You saw me do that yesterday if you watched um, all or part of the painting marathon that we did yesterday. I'll clean this glue stick off of here. I used a limited palette and I didn't vary from the palette and I did four very different paintings all with the same three or four colors of paint. So limiting creative constraints is a great way to inspire your creativity. It is a very um, 
core principle of creative design is creative constraints, or some people call it the elegance of limits, the elegance of limits, but to make sure that you're not overwhelming yourself with choices. So those five tips, again, just in summary, are <clears throat> number one, work small. This is a four by four journal. Number two, test a supply. Number three, find a creative prompt or a challenge that will help jumpstart your creativity or a new artist <clears throat> that'll inspire you to try something different. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number four was to prep pages in a journal, a big journal, a small journal, it doesn't matter, but just to get something down on the page. And then number five is to limit your palette. So I'm doing a great job of gluing pages together in my journal. So limit your palette. So this is a fun one. The, the palette is already started. So I have um, a green and a yellow and I might add a teal to this as well or you know a turquoise and those would be the only three colors I allowed myself to use for these pages right so like I could come back over the the top of these and just start adding paint over the oil pastel in this same palette so simple simple tips to get through a creative hump when you are feeling like you don't know what to do or know what to don't know what to focus on and um, I can't wait to like these pages are really exciting me these two in particular right not sure where I might go with some of these but I have some smaller collage images that I've been holding on to and I love filling pages with collage and so you know this one might and I might even add some of my own color to this but I love this something about this little this is someone else's watercolor I think from actually um, a book of lessons uh, painting lessons or something that I found cheap and have been cutting up so I'm curious about those things that are floating around on my desk that haven't gotten used yet like where do they belong how can I use them what wants to happen here so all of a sudden from this morning when I sat down going well I don't know what to do till well let me just play with some color and some paper and see what happens I have a place to begin and something to respond to for um, some new creative inspiration as always thank you so much for joining me I'm Dr. Minette Riordan this is painting in your PJs live with Minette please like this video subscribe if you haven't subscribed and uh, come back tomorrow at 8 a.m. mountain time where I will be doing something with these pages I couldn't tell you what but I will be doing something with them thanks everybody have a great rest of your day